Welcome. My name is Barbara Radzavikas and I'm a Bondi crafter. Welcome to my new subscribers. Thank you so much for finding me. Thank you to my long time and good friend subscribers and any future subscribers. Thank you for being a future subscriber. <laughs> In this episode, I thought I would have a look at um, my half hexagon template and show how to machine piece uh, a hexagon quilt top. It's a 10 inch um, hexagon, so it's a big, um, a big template. Here it is here. So it's quite big, but it makes a perfect um, hexagon when it's sewn together. And it's sewn together in strips so that it forms the hexagon when it's finished. So that should be exciting to look at. I'm doing mine in black and whites. Um, I have a few acquisitions, mainly just paper um, patterns this week. I love paper patterns. Just, um, I think I bought four. Have a look at those. I thought we'd go and have a look at some uh, swans in Centennial Park, hopefully tomorrow. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, and uh, there's other exciting things to um, look at. I hope we have a fun time this week. This is the uh, winter equ equinox um, episode. So, shortest day, longest night. <laughs> I should get on with it. I don't have a balcony for my garden and I have a few indoor plants and this one is now flowering. It's a, a soft cone dendrobium. Isn't it beautiful? It has flowers on it and buds. So full of potential. And a beautiful plant. It's um, an epivite. That means its roots grow on air. So it grows in trees um, on the bark <laughs> or in um, crevices in trees. And, uh, yeah, fresh air and water. <laughs> Perfect indoor plant. So beautiful. I have this orchid um, growing in my window so that it gets excellent light it's winter at the moment but the sun is not direct so it is facing south the sun at the moment is on the north side of the building so it is nice and warm in here though so that's probably why it's flowering and I don't water it I don't over water so I water it like once every two weeks just so the water um the potting mixture is damp but not soaking and yeah I think that's a that's about all I think it likes it in this position so I will leave it there it's in a nice macrame hanger it also um, works as a curtain so that's lovely I have a few acquisitions this week, but they're mainly knitting patterns. I love patterns, whether they're sewing patterns or knitting patterns or... <laughs> I just love patterns. So these are the ones that I've bought. I really... I saw this on a podcast. I'm sorry, I can't remember which one. Might have been Young Folks. Um, but the shawl had been knitted, and it's only in garter stitch. It's very nice. Um, in worsted weight wool it is called homestead by mandarines i think that's mandarines anyway it is a beautiful shawl lovely i'm going to try that one the next one i got is 
focus, Ruby Port, and I bought three patterns by Baby Cocktails, and I thought, oh, this is just a fab find. And this is so beautiful. I want to make cardigans that, you know, are bottom up. And the um, cable pattern is written out. So that is a win-win for me. The cables are beautiful, written out. And I definitely want to make this one. I'm not sure when. <laughs> you know how it is with patterns. This pattern is called Claret. And it is a beautiful jumper. The pattern is, uh, the jumper is knitted bottom up and the cables are written out. So there is all I desire <laughs> in a pattern and being beautiful. I'm thinking with this pattern, I might make a vest. Just leave the arms off because it's drop shoulder. And um, I think it's just lovely. And it's also done in thicker yarn. And the last one I got is Ghost in the Orchard, a lovely vest. I love vests. There's just, how beautiful is that? It's knitted bottom up, circular in the, um, in the round. And um, I'm not sure if I said this just a minute ago, written out, the cables. But yeah, isn't that lovely? I have to wait till my shoulder is a bit better. I think I've got RSI. I could be wrong, but it feels like that to me. I've never had it before. But the symptoms, I've Googled them, and I think that's what I've got. So, yeah, my beautiful patterns for this week. I just like looking at them, I think, but I should uh, make them. What do you think? Who loves vests? This beautiful parcel came for me today in the post and oh, as soon as I saw the label, I knew who it was from. My favourite fabric people of all time. They sell the most beautiful linens. And this is what's in there. Oh, it is so beautiful. It's a fawny colour. I guess it's natural. With spots. And these spots are just the most beautiful black. It's really light brown with black spots. And oh, linen black gingham. Wow. These are all 100% linen. 145 centimeters wide and I bought two meters of each and guess what I'm gonna make two more fen dresses I tell you my fen dresses are multiplying I'll have like 12 so <laughs> it's so fun you all know that hexagons are my favorite shape and I've been collecting hexagon templates now for oh a few years since, um, a few years, probably 2014. I think that's when I seriously got into English paper piecing again. Um, in this episode, we're going to have a look at the template box first. This is mainly my collection of hexagons. And then I will have a look at um, how to actually machine quilt the big hexagon, half hexagon, um, into a quilt top, which is quite exciting, I think, because it's not doesn't involve paper piecing or hand piecing. This is one of my favourite size hexagons. It's a three inch hexagon, and it's got a half inch um, seam allowance, which we don't really need that much seam allowance. But when it's a big hexagon. Um, a good amount of seam allowance is really essential because you you fold it over the paper, you rub it around your fingers a few times before anything happens. So that is a good idea for a big hexagon quilt. 
I've made a few of the hexagon quilts, English paper piecing though I've got to say. There are so many um, templates in here. This is a wedge. Can you believe it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's a triangle, but it makes a wedge for a hexagon. It is a one to tw a one to ten inch hexagon template. I think Judith may have given me this one. I so love it. I love all my hexagon templates. This one I made um, for fussy cutting, very intricate fussy cutting because and one inch, and when you um, have a picture that you like on fabric it has to be it has to fit into this size when completed but um, um small small very tight components would make up this one so i would take three exact pictures cut them into these pieces and then put it all back together so that it forms one picture the same picture that i cut up into seven pieces and it's called Fussy Cutting. And that is my template for it. We could do that too if anyone is interested. Fussy Cutting is a fabulous thing. These are just... I just love them. And I've collected them. So many. A little one. This is a half inch hexagon. With the, with the um, seam allowance included. This is what I'm thinking of doing. So this is a fabulous um, template. It's hard to see, but it has all the marked, um, all the marked sizes for different. So it starts at two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half finished. And it, the seam allowance you just include in it, but that is a very handy template I got these at a quilt shop they might have been Logan's a long time ago a quarter inch hexagon paper set and these are the templates in it and they have the seam allowance included but so fun it's so fun experimenting with hexagons they coloring in paper that came came with a template here is my half my half hexagon template rusty ferret if you are looking if you're looking at this this is an excellent template to have you machine piece it so you cut out your your hexagon that you want and then you just cut out all of them and then you just slot them into each other up and down up and down and the next row you do the opposite and you make sure that you have the same color if you like hexagon to make a hexagon so it just all slots together and it is so fun so that's to make a big hexagon quilt and really you don't need anything else. It's just that, your machine, and fabric. <laughs> that's what you need with all quilts. But yes, that's what you need. Look at that. Is that just beautiful? Three eighths. I think you're going to slip off. Just slipped off. <laughs> I have a lot of packets. All different sizes. These, um, I just love them. This is the first one I got. It was on a magazine. Um, it's a one inch with a three eighths inch seam allowance, and it is perfect. I never want to lose it. I've made some notes. <laughs> um, some hexagons you can buy in a nest, like this from the shop from the haberdashery shop or from the quilt shop some notes by me <laughs> on in checks are gone 
a lot of different ones. Ones together. Minis. <laughs> a key ring from the Quilters Guild. A lovely. All these little ones. So this is my fun box. This is another one for fussy cutting. Seam allowance around the edge. It's mainly to get the, the pictures before you start cutting. So I need three of these around the outside. And then I'll know how many to cut out. But yeah, is that beautiful or what? Even in a box. So this is ready to start a big hexagon quilt that is made with this half hexagon and it's made on the sewing machine so no papers needed either and I've chosen to make this one out of black and whites so I've got my black and whites that I really like just little pieces of black and white and then white and black so need a nice selection of that need some colored pencils the hexagon the trusty fiscus and some graph paper to start with so that we can plan how many pieces we need and the colors well black and white but how they go together i've chosen my black and whites and john is kindly cutting out the half hexagons two of each um with the big template and the fiscus which will save me a lot of work with my sore arm so yeah should look good so the next step will be sewing them together on the sewing machine when I feel that um, it won't hurt my arm too much thanks John John's cut out all the pieces for me so this is just the center that just to show how big it's going to be and how it's constructed so when you cut out your half hexagons you sew them together in strips so that will be a strip another strip the only thing with this method is you have to make sure that your strips line up when you're finished so that you get the colors that match just with this one otherwise you can have you know half and half or however but this is very a very neat way of doing hexa hexagons if you don't want to do English paper piecing or if you want to sew on the sewing machine so it is so fast and it will turn out really nice so I'll keep you posted next um, podcast we'll see how we're going and I'll film every step okay
that's me signing off for this week. Thank you for joining me. See you next week. Bye. P.S. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you.